Hello there. What is going on, everybody? Today, I'm going to be talking about what do we have to look forward to in 2020 for Star Wars Armada. So all you Armada players out there, I'm just going to talk about Star Wars Armada right now. Because while this is probably one of the games that's likely to receive the least amount of new content in 2020, I think there is still significant content out there that we're likely to see. So first among the most obvious things is wave eight so we're going to talk a little bit about that some of the fun things i think we're going to do with wave eight uh but also a couple other things but i do want to remind you guys there is a new round of the giveaway that's going on right now all you have to do to enter to win if you'd like to win a 25 dollars amazon gift card is be a subscriber and leave a comment on this or one of my videos it's as simple as that so mash that subscribe button and uh, let me know what you're looking forward to uh for star wars armada in the year 2020 now Obviously, Wave 8 is overdue. It should have been out in December, but there were some delays. I've heard rumors of why there are delays, but they're unconfirmed, and I'd rather not spread unsubstantiated rumors at this point. However, point being, uh, the Starhawk and the Onager should both be out. Now, also, the artwork that's behind me today is the work of the wonderful and incredibly talented Darren Tan. So if you are uh, familiar with his amazing artwork, he does a lot of the artwork for a lot of Fantasy Flight games, as well as a lot of other gaming companies. But uh, but he's one of my favorite artists out there, and he really helps bring these wonderful ships to life. Uh, but yes, this, uh, you know, Wave 8 is going to be a lot of fun. It's going to bring a lot of new mechanics to the game, especially the Onager with its ignition attack um, in extreme range. So there's a whole new range type that's coming to uh, to the game, and it's going to be out. I mean, it's still currently set for, for January, but it may be as late as February. I can imagine it being pushed back since we're already kind of approaching the middle of January and we still don't have like a shipping notice yet. However, um, you know, keep your hopes high because it's going to be awesome having new ships for both factions. Rebels are actually getting a ship this time, so it's not just like the SSD where only only the uh, you know the Imperials get stuff. Um, I mean, we also had just had a SSD and Rebellion in the Rim last year, so there's still a lot of fresh new content out there. A lot of new objectives people haven't fully flushed out yet. A lot of new squadron play, new campaigns. You know, there's that all of that stuff is currently out there. Uh, but with Wave Eight coming, brought something else new. And that is, uh, you know, some significant errata in the form of forum posting with, you know, a new version of Radis that's, you know, a lot of people were saying this is a tremendous nerf to Radis. And while I, I understand that, um, I can also understand the reasonings for it. They don't want, you know, Starhawks getting dropped at range, you know, like, you know, right in people's faces. So, you know, it, but again, the Radis nerf wasn't just about the Starhawk having command value of four, but it was also saying that it has to be from your from your flagship. And I think that's the one that really got people upset. I made a video talking about it a little bit. Um, I understand that, and I kind of like it. I think it's it's healthier, uh, makes Radis, because Radis was kind of cheap. And uh, I think, you know, one of the things that kind of worries me is a lot of times when they fix a problem, they overfix it. Like the flotilla problem, I feel like, you know, hey, you know, all we had to do was, you know, fix relay, what, like we did, and then, you know, kind of fix the flotilla lifeboat thing. Uh, you can't put your commander on there. And, oh, by the way, yeah, they, they count as far as, like, you, you, to be tabled. Um, you, you can still have flotillas on there. Uh, they didn't also have to go and say you can only have two flotillas. I feel like it was like maybe a little bit too much uh, because if you if somebody wants to run like eight flotillas, well, you'll just kill the one non-flotilla ship they have and then you'll table them. You know, so, you know, I feel like, um, like you're, they're, you know, like they, maybe they overfixed that. But I think it's all in the, in, in, you know, in future proofing because perhaps we'll see different types of flotillas that will kind of change the way we look at flotillas in the future. But, um, but I like that we're able to actually get some FAQs kind of addressed in the forms of forum, you know, postings now. And and I think that's something else maybe we'll see a little bit more of in 2020. You know, good answers to to questions, good new solutions to things, uh, and and possibly even patches or changes because like with the Radis change. You know, it wasn't a hundred percent nerf because they also did extend the range to uh, range one to two instead of just uh, distance one. So there's exists a little bit of new, um, you know, new play in how you might do 
radis. You know, one example might be that maybe you put radis on the profundity in MC75 with the profundity title. And then to try to get more out of Radis, people will be expecting Radis to come straight from your little, you know, from a little flagship and try to kill it. Well, the profundity will be a lot harder to kill because it's an MC-75. Well, maybe you also, have, you know, you've got a Liberty off to the side, no problem, or maybe a second MC-75. Maybe you then take Radis, um, transfer him to a hammerhead that's docked with profundity Radis now gets to leave on that hammerhead right and then you basically drop from a different you know from range two of that so now you're extending that range uh even further uh you know so like i think like there's a possibly a lot of cool little tricks you can play with Radis now that's going to require you to be very clever and that could be fun um, I mean, Armada is a game that has a very slow release schedule right now, so things like that uh, I think could be a lot of fun. Uh, although it might not be as viable in the very competitive tournament scene, but if you play Armada casually for fun, I think the Radis change can give you a lot more fun I options and fun ideas. It may even present people in the tournament scene to dismiss Radis as less of a threat now, and with some creative thinking, you might actually be able to surprise people. That being said, beyond Wave 8, Wave 8 is going to be a lot of fun. I think the Starhawk uh, versus SSD battles will be a lot of fun. The Onager, uh, there's going to be like a lot of like, hey, what's the magic number to run? Do we want to try and run three of them? Or is Double Onager going to be very, very po popular? We also saw the changes to how Evades are going to work at extreme range. They're going to cancel a, uh, a second dice is going to be the default effect. You know, and I already talked about all these in another video. But in addition to that, we've also got the Clone Wars. That's supposed to be coming in 2020. Now, they haven't really talked concretely very much about the Clone Wars outside of the fact that they're working on it. Uh, we don't know an awful lot about how the Clone Wars is going to be taking effect. We don't know if the Clone Wars is going to be a core set much like it is in Legion. We don't know if the core, if the Clone Wars is going to come as like little... Um, ship combos and then a la, an a la carte faction much like it is in X-Wing. We don't know if the Clone Wars will take something new. Like maybe you'll have individual core sets. Maybe you'll have a Republic core set and maybe a Separatist core set. Maybe there will be an Essentials kit. So there'll be no core set at all, but you, everybody will just get an Essentials kit and then you can buy all your stuff a la carte. Um, you know, we also can expect probably card packs at some point, much like how Legion and X-Wing are all doing card packs now. And I think with new factions that is the perfect time to do card packs they've said pretty plainly that they want to do card packs for multiple games armada is by far the game that needs card packs the most because it's got so many really really good um, upgrade cards that are only available in a single ship so you've, you're forced to buy across the aisle you're forced to buy multiple ships of a ship that maybe you'll never use i i give the example a lot of times when i talk to people about how i bought four mc30s so that I can have four TRC uh, Turbo Laser Reroute circuits. And then, the, like the day or two after I bought my fourth MC30 for the upgrades, they announced that the TRC Turbo Laser Reroute circuit was going to become a, uh, you know, a, a promo in OP kits for that next quarter. And I was like, oh, well, then I got, you know, a couple more of them, you know, just for playing in tournaments and events. And so I was like, and I think the first one, like, hardly anybody showed out. So they gave everybody, like, three of them. And I was like, wow. You know, I wouldn't have had to buy all those MC30s because there's very few times that I've actually been really tempted to run a you know four MC30 list. Um, you know, and, and even if I made that work, it's not something I'd you know run very often. So I feel like uh, that was kind of unfortunate. Um, however, you know, so I, I think card packs are something that will probably be coming in 2020. Now, the the thing that FFG has been doing lately also is they're trying to shrink the window between announcement and delivery they've been trying to do this with all of their games so even games like legion that have gotten constant updates um haven't gotten any updates in a while haven't gotten any new product announcements in a long time but one of the things that's happening now they're looking to try to get like a three or four month kind of window as opposed to something like the super star destroyer that had like a two-year window like announced and then boom there it is uh they're definitely trying to shrink that down uh, so I think you're going to see products announced, like publicly and officially announced, probably around four months before they actually show up. So you're going to see a much smaller window. Um, 
might get a little bit wider window for the Clone Wars for Armada when they officially announce that we actually get a look at it uh, because that being you know a, a major major movement beyond that of just a normal expansion they may want more time to hype that up and kind of reignite uh, a game that probably doesn't sell nearly as well as most of their other games do uh, and and you know that's not any fault of Armada's that really is just a you know kind of a artifact of the game being a little bit more of an expensive game and a game that uh, requires a bigger play surface and uh, you know it's a little more difficult for a lot of fair weather Star Wars fans to kind of jump into but uh, I think we will probably see other products announced now they did say at Gen Con I was able to ask Andrew Navarro that you know what are they shooting for with Armada Clone Wars uh, you know and 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 it's not, this isn't concrete because this isn't officially published. They actually turned off their cameras for Q&A, but he told me they were shooting for fourth quarter, late 2020. So probably December, you know, maybe maybe hoping for a Christmas release, maybe maybe early December, uh, maybe, maybe Thanksgiving, maybe Black Friday sales or something like that. Um, but that's what he had told me. That's what they're shooting for. And he said that, you know, they were trying to apply lessons learned from the Super Star Destroyer. Don't kind of promise it too soon. Uh, when you know their things could still go wrong, so it may not be uh, late 2020. It might not even be until 2021 that we get something like that. Uh, what else is unclear, and they certainly haven't said anything about this, is whether there'll be any other expansions in between Wave Eight and the Clone Wars. And uh, they haven't said anything along those lines. And if they do announce any other expansions before the Clone Wars, I'll be surprised. I don't expect that they will because in the past they've, you know, at least been willing to say we are also working on more expansions, you know, uh, and they kind of haven't said that. So that's actually a good question for the next uh, next live stream that they do or next ask me anything. Did I say ask me anything? Ask me anything. But uh, But the other thing is, they have said that once Clone Wars is out, one of the things they're looking to do is increase the frequency of Armada expansions. It won't be as fast as Legion, for example. You're, that's that's unrealistic. But it should be faster than it has been. So we're looking at hopefully more than one ship a year. You know, I, I think uh, for me personally, um, I am I have been very comfortable with the amount of ships that are in Armada, and it's. You know, it's better than it used to be. It's gotten to a point where there is a diverse meta. So I don't need, you know, a new wave every three months. Uh, I don't need four new waves a year. Two new waves a year would be great. Uh, I'd even be all, I'd be all right with one new wave every nine months. So we kind of stagger, you know, uh, release dates and stuff like that. Um, that would make me very, very comfortable as far as personally what I would like. That's on my wish list. But... Uh, I think if we can, you know, can, if we can concretely get one new wave every year, that'd be good. I think we're going to need more than that for the uh, for the Clone Wars core set. I think we're going to need at least two waves. I think we're going to need at least a new wave every six months. Probably, my my ideal timetable would be to have, you know, a core set or like that launch thing with maybe two ship options in addition to whatever is the core. So you can like at least get like three ship options per faction at launch, with another wave coming probably within three months, and then you start with the six month thing. So I like I would like within three to four months of it launching for there to be some list some list diversity for Clone Wars factions, and then uh, you know begin to say all right, and then next wave like wave two of Clone Wars will be like if you if you're fig if you're figuring like some kind of core launch wave. And then uh, wave one, three months later, for that wave two to be maybe six months after that. Uh, and, and then maybe we can go into the one wave a year. But that one wave a year, hopefully, will have four ships. Uh, you know, a Republic, a Separatist, and a Rebel, and an Empire. Um, and that would be a pretty good spot. They have said that they're kind of running out of ships to make. Now, that may sound as a surprise to a lot of Star Wars fans because... Uh, there's plenty of ships still available. Uh, Dornian gunship, uh, stealth ship, uh, you know, Venators for the Empire. Uh, of course, there's a decent number of Clone Wars ships, but there is not an infinite number of canon Clone Wars ships, so there's only so many that they can make there. But, there's a, but there are some good numbers. There's some great ships that can be made. And I think we're going to see more cardboard expansions. They seemed like they were more likely to have cardboard expansions, but the reason I mentioned running out of ships to make, while there are plenty of ships they can make, and they st they say they can still pull from Legends, I think um, they're 
kind of reluctant to do that a whole lot, primarily because there's some risk in trying to develop a, a giant ship like the Onager here. If you're not sure that people are going to buy it, uh, it, if from a business standpoint, like, well, sure, like, you know, maybe at least half of the Armada player base are diehard fans and they'll buy it, but that might not be enough. You know, they may need to say, look, we need to be able to promise that 100% of the Armada player base is going to buy this, plus it's going to pull in some new fans. Like, there may be some type of projections that they need to be able to make to, and, you know, to basically be able to say, hey, all right, let's put let's put the time and effort in sculpting and painting and you know playtesting and you know design time in to making the cards, making the expansions, making the new commanders, making the ship, testing the ship, all of the stuff that goes into producing something for a game like this. Uh, whereas they could instead just do a cardboard expansion, which is a lot cheaper to make because you're just making cards, printing. There's no there's no you know the 3D modeling. There's no painting of plastic and getting factories in China to, to do all the plastic work for you uh, shipping giant you know much heavier boxes from uh, you know overseas and to the United States I think they even have the potential to print card stuff in-house uh, I'm not sure how much they actually do that but you know make, basically making a cardboard expansion is a lot easier to do and uh, Armada has enough ships that, that that's fine because one of the problems right now is we need reprints of a lot of ships that are out of stock so hopefully we'll get a lot more reprints a lot of newer players who have gotten into Armada are desperate for certain ships like Architans are still in demand. A lot of the squadron packs are still in demand. So, And that's another thing with Clone Wars. You're going to have to get a lot of squadron packs too. So there's a lot of plastic to be printed with new factions coming and existing factions in desperate need of reprints for a lot, a lot of ships. Gladiators right now are hard to find too. You know, So... Uh, I think we're going to see reprints. I think we're going to. I mean, we're going to see Wave Eight hopefully very, very, very soon. Um, and I don't. I don't think. I don't think Wave Eight's going to make it by January. I mean, I'd love to be wrong, but I mean, I haven't even gotten that early email about like pre-shipment or anything like that. You know, from and I pre-order from FFG, so hopefully when they're, you know, when they're getting ready to 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 become available, you know, I'll let you know. Uh, but yeah, there, it's just I don't think it's going to be January. I would I would guess February at this point, even though they haven't officially said that. That's just me guessing. Um, don't put too much faith into that. I have been wrong before. I will be wrong again. But uh, my my basic predictions for 2020 are obviously we're going to get Wave Eight, um, and hopefully it'll be early February if it is delayed. I, hope, I mean, really, hopefully it'll you know be in January like they said. Um, Clone Wars announcements, possibly some rules updates, you know, like they are also working on a, a updated FAQ document. That's one problem that Armada has right now is the FAQ uh, is very, very old, doesn't include a lot of new keywords and currently like the only place to get the official rulings on certain new mechanics are in the rules insert that came with those ships that introduced said mechanics and so you know like hold on to your rule sheets you're going to need them because uh you know you know they don't have an updated online rules reference guide and so hopefully that will be coming i don't know what the rule you know what their agreement is for, for being able to make that a living document much like legion's living online rules reference guide is but I would hope that it becomes a living document that they can update on the fly because we just really need a more comprehensive and consolidated uh, FAQ and rules reference guide for Star Wars Armada. So that is something that they said they were working on. Um, so updated rules, errata, uh, a card pack, hopefully uh, Clone Wars uh, in all its glory. And hopefully it gets a really strong launch. I would absolutely be devastated if Clone Wars launches this year. And we've only got two ships per faction and have to wait a whole year for one more ship for each of those factions. And, you know, like the, it, it'll, it'll be it'll be dead before it ever, you know, was running. And that that would be that would be a cry on shame. So, yeah, that's uh, that's basically 2020 for Armada. That's everything that we know now. I would love to be surprised. And if they do surprise us with even more new announcements, which would be great, uh, I would expect a much shorter window between announcement and estimated street date, probably around three to four, maybe four, five months tops. I would say probably no more than five months. Um, and, uh, you know, and so hopefully they were able to stick with that and that would be great. So all you Armada fans out there, this is going to be a good year for the game. Brand new ship for the Rebels, the Starhawk. Brand new ship for the Empire, the Onager, and 
Rebels are kind of getting an SSD, right? A lot of future-proofing, too, that's done in a lot of these rulings, so it gives me a lot of hope for the future of Armada. It's still an amazing game. Still probably my favorite game in the world. Uh, I absolutely love it. It's, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. And, um, you know, let's see what else is in store for 2020. 20. All right, guys, that's all I've got for you today. I want to thank the patrons. You guys are absolutely amazing. I am starting, uh, look today on Patreon, all of those uh, 12, uh, 12 Days of Life Day giveaway rewards are going to begin to go up uh, on Patreon. So the first uh, will be posted today. So just make sure you you know see what you're looking for. I'll post a couple of things uh, this week. So I'm going to post a couple of things. I'll leave them out there for a little bit. If you're interested in those, you know, you know what to do over on Patreon. If you're interested in supporting this channel or following me on other social media or whatever, check the links in the description below. And I will talk to you guys later. I want to thank you all so much for watching. And as always, have a great day and have a fantastic 2020.